Hello, this is Beaver Felton for Super Chops for Bass. This is the primer tape, which is a collection of short solos exhibiting all the different techniques that I teach on the course. These techniques are fingers, slapping, chords, harmonics, and two-handed tapping, as well as some other tricks that I use in my playing. As you'll notice on some of the solos, I'll be incorporating one or two specific techniques, whereas on others, I'll be using a combination of three, four, or even five techniques. You'll also notice that a drum machine is used on some solos, but it's mixed way back. It's real low in the mix so that you can really distinguish exactly what's going on on bass. The last solo is going to be the one which got me featured in Mike Varney's Spotlight column in August 85 of Guitar Player. And I'll talk a little bit about that before the solo. That's later on in the tape. Okay, before the solos, I'd like to mention that the entire Super Chops for Bass course was done using a stock PV Foundation bass, the strings I use are GHS Super Steels, light or medium light gauge strings, and I found these to sound great and have a real long string life. My choice of effects are all Ibanez. Hope you enjoy the solos. Here they are.
The following solo is entitled GPZ. This is the one that got me featured in the spotlight column in Guitar Player. And you'll notice that it's a real, real crude recording. The reason for this is, well, to begin with, the way I recorded it was from like a, a very small guitar practice amp, which sounds really small to begin with, put literally in front of a ghetto blaster, a cheap one at that, uh, that just had built-in condenser mics. And that's actually the way I recorded it. On top of that, this is about a fifth or sixth generation tape. So you'll notice that it sounds pretty raunchy. Okay, I thought for several years about 
submitting a solo to Mike Varney, and I just kind of brushed it off thinking that, hey, I probably wasn't good enough and probably a little bit of laziness on, on my part also. And I was sitting around in the back of a band house one day in Columbus, Georgia, I think. We were just playing the Top 40 Rock Circuit and decided to go ahead and write a solo and record it. Okay, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want to give encouragement to anybody that's even thinking about doing the same thing I did. And don't let the fact that you probably don't have enough money to go into a nice studio and record it stop you. Remember that the emphasis is really on what you're playing. Just make sure that whatever you play can be heard, and not, not so much on the production or the quality of the recording itself. Here it is. <laughs>
closing, I'd like to point out that the Super Chops for Bass course contains many patterns and exercises that I use to develop my technique and still use as part of my practice routine. Also, many of the licks and patterns found on the tapes are actually heard on the previous solos. I think the course will help you develop your technique, enlarge your vocabulary, and hopefully give you some new ideas on playing. I hope my course will help you achieve your goals on bass and in your career. This is Beaver Felton for Super Chops for Bass. I'll see you later.